Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So glad to have you here. Give us a like, subscribe, follow along so you can continue to learn about agriculture and how it impacts your life. And today, in today's world, we're seeing the impacts of agriculture right in front of us. It's in the mainstream media. The fears about famine, the concerns about drought, and the way in which the world is counting on American farmers to produce more food than they did last year to make up for the differences in the shortages that will be coming out of Russia and Ukraine. Right now, I happen to be standing in front of a center pivot. This pivot is produced by Valmont Industries. It's a valley pivot, and it's what we run on our farm. This pivot, in particular, was installed just two and a half years ago, and there's one here and a, and a twin to it. Why are we running center pivots? Why do we do overhead irrigation? Well, if you live anywhere where there isn't enough rain to water your lawn, you have to consider the same thing that's happening here. This is like a giant lawn sprinkler that pivots from the, this over my left shoulder all the way to the end. And these packets, these sprinklers that are hanging down, are delivering water at varying rates depending on where it's located on the pivot. At the center of the pivot, as it turns, obviously there's not going to be a lot of motion. It puts down a lot less water, but clear down on the end there, it has to pour the water on. It needs to have the same gallons per hour, regardless if we're right next to the center pivot or clear down at the last tower. Why is overhead irrigation beneficial? What does it do that's, that's special that we can't do using our other methodologies? Then let's talk about those other methods first. We have, on our operation, and in for most people, we have flood irrigation, which is a siphon tube that runs down a corrugate. We have drip irrigation, which is a drip line that's buried subsurface that delivers water to the, the produce that's growing there. And the third option is a center pivot. And then there's kind of a sub part of that, which would be what we've installed on some of these pivots, which is a drag line. And there's actually some of that over here and I'll show you in a second. The center pivot will deliver the water through the sprinklers, the drip line through the drip line, and the flood via, again, a corrugate running through the field. So let's talk about each one of those and the advantages and disadvantages. So what are the advantages of each of the methodologies? So let's talk first about overhead sprinklers. Overhead sprinklers using a center pivot allows you to do so many things. So first of all, you can control erosion. If we have a windy weather going on and we just need to hold the, the s surface soil down, we can run the pivot at 100%, right? We can just run it across the field as fast as possible and help hold that soil in place. If we just plant it and we need to just water just to the surface and we don't need to penetrate deeper into the soil, we can do the same thing with the center pivot. The other thing that's really handy about a center pivot is the ability to control from your cell phone what's happening on that pivot. You can monitor the application rate, the, the, the rate at which the, or you can see how the, the system is performing. In certain circumstances, you can turn the water on and off without even ever going to the field. And none of these other methodologies that I'm talking about is that possible. So it's, it's the most significant one for reducing labor as well. So let's go to the second methodology. That's drip irrigation. Drip irrigation is a, a small hose that's buried subsurface again, and that delivers water at a very efficient rate. We can deliver, and because it's subsurface, we don't have to worry about evaporation. So there's one of the advantages. But when we talk about wanting to get an even penetration or an even coverage, it's hard to do that with the subsurface drip. If we want to deliver just to the seed bed, no problem. But if we happen to need to get enough of the moisture across the entire profile, maybe to get rid of dirt clods or something like that, we struggle in those circumstances because if, if the drip tape's running down the center, we're never going to get to the center of the row, ever. There's, it doesn't matter how long we leave the system running. And on an overhead, you can, you can overcome that. That takes us to furrow. Furrow uses the most water by probably 30%. It is harder to apply that water. It is, you know, uses more water like I spoke. It also takes more labor. More and more and more of us are going further and further and further away from furrow irrigation all of the time. But there are certain circumstances where it's nice. And one of the advantages to furrow is when you have these 
fields like we have. This, this irrigation project here was, is almost 100 years old. The fields aren't perfectly round. They're not perfectly, um, they're not perfectly square. They're not perfectly anything for, for putting in a center pivot. So it allows for you know, irrigating fields that we would not otherwise be able to irrigate in, a, in an efficient manner. But again, the labor, it requires a person every single time we turn the water on to set a siphon tube. So I think the industry will continue to move further and further away from flood irrigation and more towards center pivots. I know that on our operation, we will continue to add those um, because of their efficiency and because of the ability to reduce labor and because of the ability to monitor what's happening in our fields. And we'll also continue to do the same thing with drip irrigation. Flood is something that's really cool, furrow irrigating or flood irrigation is really cool, but it's something, again, that, we'll, that we're phasing out. And I would think in 10 years, we'll be virtually gone. And that, again, that's because of the inefficiencies and in the amount of water that it uses, and also because of the amount of labor. Those are the three methodologies that we use. Um, I hope you have a little bit more of a depth of understanding of why we irrigate in the ways that we do, the tools that we use in that irrigation process, and how we are making educated decisions about how we do that. And also, so that you understand the importance that we see in conserving water. Not only because it's scarce, not also, not only because it's necessary, but because it's the right thing to do. And for us, for Center Pivots, Valley is the only solution. It's what we have on every single farm. It's what we will be installing in the future. The support that they have from their dealers and distributors is critically important to that. You can't have a pivot go down for more than a day and not have critical damage to the crop, especially where we live and especially with the high value crops that we're growing. So when we look at who's gonna put in our overhead irrigation, it's not just the price, it's not just the equipment, it's the service behind that equipment as well. So now you know what the three methodologies are that we're using and why we utilize them. We will continue to try and conserve water to the maximum extent possible, especially moving forward and seeing the challenges that we have with drought across the Western United States and across probably other locations in the country and in the world as well. Water conservation and being good stewards of the land is important to all of us. I hope that as you watch this, you understand that that's that case. Uh, if you wanna understand more about how we take care of the land, how we take care of the soil, how we take care of the water that we use, Please like and subscribe so you can continue to learn and see in the real world applications what we do to take care of Mother Earth. We'll see you.